Good morning, everyone. Um, I am hoping this video is helpful for you, but this basically I was just going to walk through um, how I've used Edpuzzle and Screencastify to make some interactive lessons that students can do anywhere. I've been use, letting them use it in class um, for a few different reasons, but it actually think I think it's going to be really helpful given the um, coronavirus stuff that's going on. So anyways, I'm actually going to do two videos, but I'll give you kind of the overview right now. Um, so anyways, you can probably see I'm here in Google Slides. This is a little slideshow that I made, uh, which is what I usually use for my videos. Um, so usually, though, I have it looking more like this. Okay, so this is what my what I would have my students see. And then I click. Okay, now we're going over to, um, we're going to do our, our overview here. So basically, what is Edpuzzle? It's just a website, but it lets you use any video, either from YouTube or other sources. It can be a video you make and record, or you could take just, you know, a video of someone else talking or, or whatever. You know, it could even be just like, uh, you know, maybe you, you found a video from a news story or something related to something you're talking about in class and you want to use that. You can use anything. Um, but what it lets you do is it pauses the video, or you can choose where it pauses, and you can insert little multiple choice or open-ended questions that the students have to answer, uh, or you can put in little notes, further explanation, all kinds of stuff. Um, and then on the other end of things, it's pretty quick and easy to grade uh, how your students respond, which is a great way to get some kind of formative assessment and just kind of see how engaged they are. And I, I've found, at least for me in class, that uh, I got a lot more engagement from students when they were working individually on their computer instead of trying to engage all 20 of them at the same time. Um, anyways, then Screencastify is what I use to make my actual videos. And so it just lets you record your screen, which I'm doing right now, uh, and then pretty easy to export that to YouTube. So that's what I'm going to start off with. I'm going to start off talking about Screencastify. Uh, so first thing you want to do is download the Chrome extension. If you click this link in the slideshow, it should take you right there, or you can just um, type it in, just search for Screencastify. Uh, I recommend putting it in the toolbar up, so it'll pop up right here, so it's just real quick and easy to start recording. Uh, and when you do that, there's a bunch of different options you can choose from. I usually do browser tab, which means it will just record the tab that you start it on. Um, if you're going to be talking, you definitely want the microphone on. If you want to have a little picture of you from your webcam, you can do this. There's some other options, but that's the basics. Um, and then click record, and that gets you started. Um, when you're ready to finish, you're going to click your little button up here on the toolbar. And the square is kind of like, all right, I'm done making my video. The, this is your pause, so if you want to, you know, fix something real quick or, you know, you have to go use the restroom or something in the middle of your video, I don't know, whatever. Um, this little circle arrow thing is basically my favorite button. This is when you start off doing it, you're like, oh, I screwed up, let me try that again, and it just automatically restarts without having to, you know, go through the whole thing again. Or if you just screw up, the trash can just sort of deletes what you had already recorded. Once you get all that and you, you click the square button, you can edit the video. You can you know, basically, you know, it's pretty basic editing, editing, but you can make it, you know, cut off the beginning or ending if you want to make it shorter. Uh, and then you're going to click export. And uh, you know, basically, there's a bunch of different ways you can export it, I guess. So I always use publish to YouTube. And then I make sure I click public so that my students can actually view it. Um, and that lets you use it with Edpuzzle, which we'll talk about in a minute in a different video. If you wanted to just give the video to your students and you don't care about the Edpuzzle stuff, you could just do share to classroom, or you could still put it on YouTube and then send them the link or something like that. Um, anyways, I think Screencast 5 is really simple to use. Um, it's pretty handy for making videos. Uh, so hopefully it will be helpful for you. And I'll talk more about Edpuzzle in a second video.